This video will explain pattern exploiting training, a really exciting new technique to leverage the knowledge in pre-trained language models to label data for downstream tasks. This is done by using patterns that guide the language model's predictions. This could be something like taking a Yelp review and following it with the pattern, all in all, my experience was mask. The language model might fill in the mask as awful or amazing, depending on the Yelp review. In this tutorial, we'll also look at Hugging Face's new NLP viewer interface. This lets us view a ton of different natural language processing datasets like the ones tested in this paper. We'll take some Yelp review examples from the NLP viewer and paste them into the Next Word Prediction demo app created by Renato Violin, hosted on GitHub and linked in the description of this video. We'll step through different patterns and show how these patterns are used with BERT, Roberta, Electra, or BART to label the data. We'll also get into the experimental results in the paper such as different semi-supervised learning settings of 0, 10, 50, 100, and 1,000 labels. This video will also describe the details of the paper and techniques to utilize multiple patterns, like weighting the label predictions and the iterative pet extension. This video will explain pattern exploiting training, a strategy to leverage the pre-trained language model to label data for downstream tasks. In the next slide, we'll visualize this pattern filling with the language model using Hugging Face's NLP dataset viewer and a next word prediction demo app that lets you view how BERT, Electra, Roberta, or XLNet would predict the mass token. So the idea is we start off with a pattern. A pattern includes its original sentence like best pizza ever, and then some uh, manually designed text followed by a mass token. And this is used so the language model can label the dataset. So if we have this context, best pizza ever, it was, the language model is likely to predict great. And then we have the verbalizer. The verbalizer is the mapping from the language model's prediction into labels for the downstream task. So peeking ahead into the study, this is the verbalizer used for the uh, text similarity task, the natural language inference task, where you have the first sentence and then you have the second sentence, and they construct this pattern of A mask B, and if the language model predicts no, then it's labeled as negative, one, yes, like entailment, two, maybe uh, neutral. So this is showing the verbalizer that maps from the language model's predictions into labels for the downstream tasks. This is Hugging Face's NLP dataset viewer, a really cool new application that they developed really recently for viewing these datasets, seeing different samples, their labels, and their indexes in the dataset. So you see there are tons of datasets that have been supported in this interface. But for our case, let's just look at the uh, Yelp reviews for the sake of visualizing the pattern exploiting training and how the language model is going to Yelp, is how it's going to complete this text. So we have these examples of these different reviews of restaurants, and we have these positive and negative labels. So let's say we have an example where we have a lot of reviews, but we haven't manually labeled them all. This is the semi-supervised learning setting where we have a small label data set and then say this massive unlabeled data set. So let's take this comment. And now we are in this deep learning in action demo app for word prediction with transformers. So what we're gonna do is paste in our review and then we're gonna put in the pattern. So this is the A sentence and then we're gonna follow it with the pattern all in all, it was mask. And then we're going to predict it with BERT, XLNet, XLM Roberta, BART, Electra, and Roberta. So you see from whichever was whatever was in this uh, review, the language model wants to finish it off with all in all, it was perfect, fun, awesome, fun, great, awesome, good, enjoyable. So our verbalizer would probably map these different uh, outputs from Roberta's vocabulary into the positive sentiment label for this review. So we can see other examples, uh, deleting this, going back to the data set viewer. This one looks negative, don't waste your time. We had to, so we're imagining that this is gonna come out as a negative label from the language model. So we predict it and we see the difference. Roberta is saying frustrating, disappointing, horrible, terrible, ridiculous. So we're seeing how uh, we give it this context and then the language model can label the data with this pattern. So the next task is mapping from these outputs into the labels with our verbalizer. The paper also gives us an example of different reviews of a restaurant like this was the best piece I've ever had, pretty bad you can get better sushi down the road for half the price, and how you need to have a description of the task where the pattern can help with for labeling these data sets. So for example, if you're just classifying it by the quality of the pizza 
or if you're qualifying it by reviews that mention the price, because that might be useful to search through these Yelp reviews and see how many people are outraged or have an opinion on a specific component of the review, like the price of the food. So now we're back in the visualization, and as we saw previously with the Yelp reviews, these models do a really good job of labeling this data with this pattern and this context. So now let's look at this uh, T1, T2, T5. This was the best pizza I've ever had. And then let's make up our own pattern, like the price was mask, exclamation point. So now when we predict this, we get right, amazing, great, awesome, fantastic. But we also see that Electra is saying outrageous in this. Bert is also putting outrageous at the second prediction with the highest probability. So we're seeing that the difference being in the Yelp task, something that I've just noticed playing around with this, is the more context you have, the longer your input, the more likely this is to work. So the other case we see pretty bad. You can get better sushi down the road for half the price. So you see with this again, we have this kind of disagreement where in Roberta we have right, high, ridiculous, outrageous, great. So if it's great, that's a good price. But if it's ridiculous or outrageous or high, you know, it's bad. So we see this inconsistency with the how long the context is. But another thing is, we might get different predictions based on the pattern that we choose. So we can imagine also having a mask expensive place to eat. And then our sentence, a very expensive to place really pretty fairly reasonably. But again, we have the disagreement where we have very expensive is, you know, very expensive, and then reasonably expensive means it's well priced. So then again, we can see other kinds of context just even changing it slightly, like having this and then comma, but the price was mask. So we can imagine even kind of subtly changing our pattern, like period to exclamation mark, putting a quote around this, all these little tricks to get more out of the patterns. So later on, as we're walking through this paper, they're going to introduce the iterative pet algorithm, which is how they're going to uh, try to leverage these ensembles of different patterns to get a better label from the pre-trained language model. So hopefully that quick demo helped you get a sense of how these patterns are used and how we use these verbalizers that are gonna take the output from something like BERT and then map it into labels for our downstream task. So before we get into the more details about how to implement this, like iterative pet and having auxiliary language modeling loss, let's look at the patterns tested in this original paper. So they're looking at the data sets, Yelp reviews, AG's news, news classification, Yahoo questions, which is another like category of questions classification task, and then the natural language inference data set. So again, you can visualize these data sets for yourself on Hugging Faces NLP viewer tool. And if you want to play around with this uh, demo app, uh, next word prediction, GitHub repository, I've also linked that in the description of the video. So these are the different patterns that are tested with the Yelp reviews in this paper. And to kind of peek ahead at the experiment results, the Yelp reviews and the natural language inference are where they get the best results from these patterns. So you see some of the patterns that the authors designed. It was mask and then the Yelp review, the Yelp review followed by all in all, it was mask, just mask, exclamation mark, context. So you see these are the different patterns and then this is the verbalizer. So the language model outputs uh, terrible, it gets mapped to the one label, bad goes to two, okay, three, good four, and grade five. It's a one to five star rating system for the Yelp reviews. The authors also test this out on the AG's News news classification data set, where the task is to take A, which is the title of the article, and then B, which is the content of the article itself, and classify it into different categories of news, like world, sports, business, or tech. So these are some of the different patterns they come up with. They have mask, colon, and then title article, title, interleaved mask, and then the article itself, or having the label go after the title article pair, or these two templates, which I think are a little more clever for this kind of task, where they have mask news, colon, and then title article, or even this one with introducing the square brackets where it's category, something like business or category sports, and then the title article. So for Yahoo questions, it's the same task. You're trying to classify these questions into different categories. So they use the same patterns. They just replace news with question. So instead of uh, like sports news, it's computer questions. The authors also test this out on natural language inference, where A is a hypothesis and then B is a premise, and you're trying to relate the two. So is B a form of entailment from A? Is it a contradiction or is it neutral and kind of unrelated? So one example of this could be from the paper is Mia likes pie, question mark, and then mask, Mia hates pie. So the language model is gonna complete that as no, Mia hates pie. And so then that's gonna be labeled as the zero label for fine tuning this on natural language inference. 
But you can see this setup of Mia likes Pi and then mask, which, which is filled in with no, Mia hates Pi. And you also see the subtle differences in these two patterns tested. This is the same pattern, but just with quotations around the A uh, hypothesis and quotations around the B premise. So you see there can be this kind of subtle nuance with designing these patterns. So this is our first example of looking at two potential verbalizers in the study. So they show mapping from wrong, Mia hates pi, and no Mia hates pi, or right, Mia hates pi, or maybe Mia hates pi mapping into these different labels of entailment or uh, contradiction, entailment, and neutral for the downstream natural language inference task. So now we'll get into the details of training these models with the pattern exploiting training. So the first thing is that we're going to be fine tuning this mass language modeling on labeling this unlabeled data. So as we're filling out the mask, we're going to use the verbalizer to map it into our set of labels and then compute a cross entropy loss from that, which goes back into our pre-trained language model, like the big BERT model, Electra, Roberta, that kind of model that's labeling this data with the pattern and the verbalizer that maps it to get the cross entropy loss. But we're also going to avoid catastrophic forgetting. Catastrophic forgetting is this problem with deep learning or neural training neural networks where as it goes from one task to the next, it tends to completely forget how to do the previous task. And we need our language model to still be able to do the language modeling task because that's where we're getting this information to label our new data from. So what they do is they have the cross entropy loss and they also weight it with the same mass language modeling loss. But in practice, this alpha parameter is really small. So it's not really incurring like a huge update on the model, but it's still used to kind of stabilize it a bit and avoid this catastrophic forgetting problem. So the next issue is combining different pattern verbalizer pairs. In the Yelp data set, we saw an example of having two verbalizers in addition to two patterns. But I think more often than not, it's gonna be the case where we have a ton of different patterns and then less verbalizers. But either way, we have these different pattern verbalizer pairs and we're trying to aggregate them for coming up with the label for this uh, new data point for the sake of fine tuning a classifier on the downstream task. So they introduced two different weightings of this. You could either have a weighting W of P, P being the pattern in the set of all the patterns or pattern verbalizer pairs, where say the pattern that's performing the best currently with like the smallest cross entropy loss with the label data set or some metric is weighed differently from other patterns, or you can just uniformly weight these all. But what they're doing is they're aggregating these unnormalized scores, which is like this softmax probability on the labels that the uh, language model is putting on these different data points and you're summing these up to get the overall like ensemble of predictions for this label. So one way of making use of multiple pattern verbalizer pairs would be to just aggregate the different predictions and then sum this up into our prediction for a given data set. But they propose another technique, the iterative pet algorithm that better leverages multiple pattern verbalizer pairs because you might have one pattern that just needs a bit of fine tuning in order to steer it in the right direction and then it's really useful for labeling the data. So the idea behind iterative pet is we have all, we start with this small labeled data set T compared to our large unlabeled data set D and we have these different uh, M sub 1, 2, 3 which represent the different uh, language models that are being fine tuned with a different pattern verbalizer pair trained with the cross entropy loss on how they're labeling uh, the small labeled set T. So now what we're doing is we're selectively mapping these different patterns as predictions for labels into a combination for the next data set. And then we're minimizing the disagreement and we're using this to label the data and get a better estimate of that cross entropy loss with the unlabeled samples D based on the prediction of the ensemble of patterns. So by selecting a random subset of patterns and then distilling this into kind of an agreement throughout the training, we get to a much better model. And as we'll look at the results, this results in a much better uh, downstream model. So these are the results of the PET algorithm compared to iterative PET. So in the case where we don't have any labeled examples, you see the huge difference between iterative PET and then the original PET version. So the original PET, you can either take the maximum performing pattern or you can take the average of the patterns. And you see a pretty huge difference without any labels given taking the maximum performing pattern compared to averaging out all the patterns or the pattern verbalizer pairs that you've come up with. So you see these gains scale there's an enormous difference between PET and iterative PET compared to just supervised learning on the small data set at the 10 label setting, the 50 label setting, and the 100 label setting. And then it starts to die out at 1,000, although you see a natural language inference where you have the two sentences, premise, 
our hypothesis and premise and you're telling the relation, you see there's still a huge gain with the pet algorithm. This table shows the results of having multiple pattern verbalizer pairs. So even though the worst performing pattern verbalizer pair has a really awful score relative to the uh, full pet model or the maximum performing pattern verbalizer pair on Yelp, the news, question classification, and the natural language inference, you see when aggregating them either by seeking a uniform weighting or uh, unevenly weighted uh, weighting on that W of P when you're aggregating the unnormalized uh, label predictions, you still see a big, not super big, but a bit of a gain over just taking the maximum pattern. And this is the case that you're not doing iterative pet, you're just aggregating the scores up. And we'll see also in the iterative pet algorithm, we're able to further leverage these different, having multiple pattern verbalizer pairs to get better downstream performance and get better labels for training our classifiers on downstream tasks. So with respect to how many iterations do we have to step through this iterative pet algorithm where we take a step and then aggregate the predictions on the unlabeled data, have this agreement, and then take another step with the cross entropy loss, take another step of aggregating the ensemble with the unlabeled data, and so on. This is the progression of the performance through each step of the iterative pet algorithm. So we see this kind of uh, quick gain and then saturating off gains on these different data sets. Another interesting area of the paper that I've left out the details in this video is their automatic verbalizer search. So in this pet algorithm, we have to come up with a verbalizer that maps these different words into the labels. So this is the example for verbalizers that their automatic verbalizer search comes up with for Yelp with 50 training examples. You see how different words that the mass language modeling uh, model might come up with for the mass token like worthless, bad, useless, appalling are all uh, bucketed into this one star rating whereas they choose golden, magical, marvelous, and perfection to go into the five-star rating for the Yelp reviews. So you can see from this table that there are a lot of different verbalizers that could be used, although it looks like from the reporting of the results that they still haven't quite uh, figured out how to do this technique better than a manually designed verbalizer search. So being skeptical of this algorithm, you might say that the performance gain is only because you're adding more of this unlabeled data D, which is in the domain distribution. So what they show here is the different performance gains compared to original supervised learning in the red and then the pet algorithm compared to having more pre-training with more in-domain data. So the idea is, is this gain from pet only because we're training on more in-domain data? But this plot shows that actually pet benefits a little more from the pre-training than the supervised learning does. Although we see cur the current state of this algorithm seems to be that once you hit a thousand labels, other than natural language inference, but this is for the Yelp review classification, for a thousand labels, the gains start to saturate off. So this could be a result of maybe not having enough patterns, maybe not aggregating the predictions across a wider set of language models, the verbalizer pair, the verbalizer search. There could be still a lot of room for exploring this further, which is why I think this algorithm is so interesting as a data augmentation tool. So I think it also might be interesting to contrast this with some semi-supervised learning methods that have been really successful in computer vision. So the most famous of which is the self-training with noisy student algorithm, which I think currently has the ImageNet state of the art. So what they do is they have the ImageNet data set, and then they have this massive unlabeled, the JFT 300 million data set from Google. So they train on this noisy data, and then they use it to label the noisy data, and then have this knowledge distillation process of training the next iteration of the student. So they use knowledge distillation with this noisy data, in a somewhat similar way as iterative pet, although you know not quite the same, but this trend of using knowledge distillation is evident in both of these highly successful semi-supervised learning methods. This is fixed match, and you see this case. This, this is the idea of uh, knowledge distillation, is you transfer the prediction on the unlabeled data and then use that as the label distribution, or you can make it this one hot pseudo label for the sake of training the student model. So in the case of fixed match, which is uh, pretty different from PET, although we can imagine different patterns being the difference between weakly augmented and strong augmented. So imagine one pattern, which is something like the Yelp review, and then all in all, it was mass. That might be weakly augmented because that is going to probably sum up the review because of how it's set up. But you can imagine a more ambitious kind of pattern, like my experience was blank, and then the context, or I don't know, some kind of pattern that's more challenging to form these kind of weak and strongly augmented pairs. So it might be interested to see kind of this difference between how they use semi-supervised learning and computer vision, where there's a lot of knowledge distillation and data augmentation compared to this uh, PET algorithm, which I think is still kind of, uh, it's pretty new and I think it'll be developed further because 
it's probably one of the most exciting techniques for using these pre-trained language models to do data augmentation for downstream tasks. Thanks for watching this video on pattern exploiting training. I hope from this video you were able to understand what a pattern verbalizer pair is and see some of the extensions and details of the paper, like using the auxiliary language modeling loss, the iterative pet algorithm, and the early prototype and the conceptual idea of having an automatic verbalizer search that can automatically find the mapping from the mass language modeling uh, model's prediction into the labels for the downstream task. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.